<laughs> Welcome to take 87 of Critical Cafe. Is it going to be a camera problem this time? Who knows? Is it going to be a mic that goes out? Who knows? Am I going to say critical roles instead of critical cafe? Who knows? Tell me now. Am I going to giggle in the middle of it? Yes. <laughs> yes, you will. I know. Welcome to Critical Cafe. Join us as we chat about the latest episode, the campaign as a whole, and critical role in general. All while we partake in a delicious cup of coffee. So grab yourself a tasty beverage, settle into your favorite cozy spot, and get ready for a little geek philosophy. Welcome to Critical Cafe, where we're going to talk about Campaign 3, Episode 37 of Critical Role. My name is Brian, and this is Crystal. Hi. All right, let's get moving. Okay, so interestingly enough, we didn't get a chance to watch this together, so this is right. fresh for both of us. The reaction that you guys see on camera is our reaction <laughs> and feedback because we haven't had a chance to discuss this. Uh, Crystal was traveling, uh, had a good trip, I hope. Yeah, had a really yeah. good trip. Yeah, I mean, I knew that, but just saying it yes. for the camera. But, you know, uh, <laughs> but we, we did actually say hello and talk about the trip. But uh, at any rate, we're going to uh, jump into <laughs> talking about the uh, <laughs> we're going to jump in and talk about the rest of the episode that we watched separately this time. And I listened so, to on the way home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you got yeah. the audio. You know, yeah, it's I didn't get to see. Mm. At, so um, a little after the break. Yeah, we'll get there. I had there. to listen to while I was driving. So. Oh, man. Okay. So first half, um, you want to start out or you want me to kick us off? What do you want to do? Well, I mean, you know, first half starts. They're coming up, uh, I think, from that tunnel yep. that they had found. And uh, Chetney's up front, comes out, looks around, you know, then gets everybody else up. And they pretty much decide, okay, all right, we're in Whitestone. Well... He looks around, but probably more importantly, it's Chetney, so he smells around. He's, he's, and, and he smells. <laughs> and he smells undeath, which is yes. really interesting. So he picks up a whiff of some kind of necromancy happening, yeah. which, Yeah, you Matt know. specifically says necromancy. He get, gets yep. the necromancy feel, so. Yes. So, yeah, you're right. So, uh, you know, that kind of almost sets the tone of their expectations going, okay, all right, it's it's a little bit different from what we might be thinking. So, Or maybe it's exactly yeah. what they're thinking. I don't know. Well, and it's but, um, white stone, but it's got an eerie green fog. It's very creepy looking, you know. Um, things look kind of sinister. Yep. And not only sinister, but like, uh, and well, uh, you know, as they come up, they sort of realize... Um, like some interesting things. I think it was Ashton maybe that saw, like realized like, you know, there. well, maybe they all saw it originally, but the bones that were around and things that like, and I think he even um, broke one open or, or used his knife or something and, and checked one out and it was like bleeding. Yeah. And yeah. like a marrow smell to it. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And Orem, I think at that point is the one that kind of scouted things out. Like he didn't he climb a tree or up to a building or something and like try to look yeah, around yeah, to see what's going on. They they were realizing that the um, the buildings were making noises and rearranging themselves. So they were trying to figure out what was happening. You know, yeah. um, it reminds me a little bit of the labyrinth. You know, whatever. Yes. She's gone down into the goblin kingdom or whatever and to get the baby and everything yeah. keeps shifting and changing in the stairwell. <laughs> totally. That is, it's, you took it right out of my mind. Like that was yeah. sort of the image I get too. Just it's Whitestone instead, right? Like just moving and... And it's um, houses. Something. Yeah, houses. And even the the foliage and like trees and stuff would be... It was yeah. Yeah, kind of creepy, but yeah, uh, creepy. appropriate. So, um, <laughs> oh, and not only did the bone bleed, but when Orem... I think used a sword or something to cut into one of the buildings. It bled. Yeah, so it was yeah. Like Everything this weird... has this weird mar marrow mm. smell. Yeah. Fern made a joke about wanting to eat it, but you know, <laughs> Fern. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Fern. Yeah. Fern went complete carnivore diet, so she's going well, for the marrow. You know, yeah, Ashley's playing uh, her, her his best life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, so, like, um, I think once Orem is checking stuff out, that's when he realizes, like, in the distance there is the tree, the sun tree, yeah. or the sort of, uh, you know, decrepit, like, 
you know tainted yeah. form of the sun and I tree. Think, yeah, he sees and ropes in the very from beginning, it too. Yeah, I think for, in the very beginning they were so far away they couldn't really see a ton of stuff. You know, they had to traverse the area quite a ways before they got to the sun tree. That's right. Um, and it seemed like everything was working against them trying to go where they needed to go. It was. Yeah. I think the buildings were trying to herd them in a certain area, you know. I mean, it was very, you know. Yeah, uh, I loved it. I, it. You know, from a DM perspective, yeah. I thought it's such a good way, especially since you know you're in this sort of dream realm, in between life and death, sort of spirit realm type place. You can play with that kind of stuff and go right. crazy with it. And uh, everything seems to be sort of metaphor or like relationship to uh laudanus past or what we right. know of laudanus past it was just really interesting um one thing and i want to get your take on this because again uh not being able to get your reaction when it happened so you know imogen kind of opens up her mind a little bit and reaches out and she hears a little boy 12 year old or ish or i don't know exactly how old but um, talking to a girl named Matilda. And so I'm curious of what you thought when it was sort of said the name Matilda instead of Laudna. Um, I just remember, I think, out loud going, wait, hold on, her name is Matilda and it's not Laudna? Interesting. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Um, but it makes sense, you know, uh, she wasn't a creepy little girl, you know. That's she's, true. That's true. Yeah. So she would have a regular name or a somewhat regular name, I think. You know, um, but I—it's going to be interesting when she does come back, if she does come back, um, with them finding out that she used to be Matilda. Is that something yeah. that she's going to want to go back to, or? Um, is she going to continue to go by Laudna? You know, I mean, it's just, it just, it's very intriguing to me um, yeah. to kind of see where that goes because I know she has some memories, but she doesn't have all of her memories. Um, so this might be something she doesn't remember. I'm also like, I'm also halfway and we'll get there as we go, but like, I might be just overthinking something, but I'm also wondering, is Matilda actually Laudna? Maybe it's not. And I don't know. Uh, and, and I'm I and that's the part I might be overthinking a little bit, and it comes into play a little bit longer. Right. She like it basically leads them to the barn, right? Yes. Um, and that's where things you know kind of start taking a bigger turn, right? So, what'd you think of that whole like entering? Into it was the barn so scene? creepy, you know. Yeah. I mean, like the vines come alive. She's playing with this little doll, you know, that's got a necklace around it. You can tell the vines are coming down as they're all getting inside and. They're trying to talk to like little girl Laudna Matilda, yeah. and um, you know she's playing with her dolly, and Imogen keeps trying to talk to her and trying to let her know that they're there to help her, to take her home, you know, the whole nine yards. But she's just, and she's a little bit of a shadowy figure. It's not like she's yeah. full on, you know, in her form. She it still has a very like a dreamscape feel to it, where she's. Um, She's kind of incorporeal. incorporeal. Yeah, just like in the previous <laughs> like uh, game where they saw that form inside right. the the hut, right, or the cabin. Yeah. Um, it was sort of that shadowy essence uh, type of thing, which is also yeah. cool because like you're not actually seeing her the way they know her at any point until like later right. on. So, um, yeah, really interesting to me. And then. Uh, the other part that I think was really uh, cool was the fact that um, even later, well, we'll get to, I, maybe it happens a little bit later, but like the whole necklace thing, yeah. um, like them uh, sort of keying in on that, doing a whole, well, before we get there. <laughs> So there's the whole getting out of the yes of the of the bar. The vines have <laughs> locked them down. Yeah, you know Matilda slash Laudna just disappeared because she had to go somewhere, and then they're all stuck in the barn with the vines wrapping tightly around the outside of the barn so that they can't get out. So they have to fight the vines to get out. And 
And the Matilda girl is basically telling him then when they do contact her, like that she won't let her leave anyway, which is yeah. what the vines are not letting them do. Right. Um, although they do eventually get out, which was, you know, it's pretty cool. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. And, and but the you know, dynamite it's that whole thing. Play, it's so. all those little fights that come along before you get to the big bad, you know, that kind of wears yeah. them down a little bit and uses up some of their spell slots. <laughs> they end up getting out. They have the whole. <laughs> They throw the dynamite. Like, where they got all the dynamite? I can't remember, but... Uh, I can't remember where they got all the... <laughs> it's... Like, there's dynamite throughout this thing, which, whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the... Uh, but then, like, a little bit later, they get the con- the contact through lot or through Imogen of an older uh, Matilda. A little bit older. Yeah. And that kind of like leads teenage them... Teenage years. Yeah. Which leads them to the house, and she's prepping to yes. go to a dinner yes. and Imogen like I I think uh, Laura always plays great but like the her her trying to like stop Laudna yeah. from having all these things happen was so well played like because that's I think a natural thing that you would do yeah. but I also yeah. think like I gotta give Talison some credit too because he kept saying he's like you can't stop this Right. You can't stop what already happened. It's already happened. Right. Uh, I think he even said we're not time travelers. Like Exactly. Yeah. And like, you know, so it was sort of delaying them. And that was like, I think he called it out really well. It was like, that's what Delilah was trying to do. Like if the all that purpose. stuff was there, yeah. it was just yeah. slowing them down. Right. Um, she wanted to see them at the tree, basically. Yeah. So back to the, the thing, you see uh, Matilda father figure mother figure yes and father refers to someone as laudna yes but i can't tell and maybe it's just the way i heard it i'll have to go back but do you remember if he referred to the mother as laudna or matilda (laughs) as laudna he referred to matilda and then the mother also referred to her as laudna i think that she's taken the place of her mother her mom's putting her in her best dress she's uh. she's you know i think that and they're telling her to make the family proud you have to make so, the family proud i see so like they that could be the analog of her and um silas as the parents there um we don't really see the parents like the smoky parent figure it could be like Delilah and quote unquote father figure Silas. What I took away from it, or what it, the impression for me was that it was her parents. Um, and that at so, somewhere along the line, it became beneficial for her to be Laudna to go to the castle. Um, whoever Laudna was, I suspect it was her mom's name, but that's it here, you know, whatever. But, um, I think the whole reason behind her going was because, you know, she was born with this innate magic and she really thought that Lady Briarwood would be able to kind of help tutor her or mentor her. So I don't know if she talked somebody into letting her, her take their place. I don't know. All I know is that her, the, the, the parent figures, which Matt called them parents, the parent figures asked her to do the family proud and, yeah. you know, to, that, to be grateful for the opportunity because they were, you know, they weren't well off. They were poor and, and she was being invited to the castle. Before they fought the parents, you know, uh, Imogen uh, spoke to Laudna. Mm. And Laudna got up and walked upstairs, and the fo- the parent figures like sh- like their heads turned, and then they you know lunged and broke the glass and done all- did all of that, and they fought them, and then that was when Talison was like, "Look, we gotta go. This we is get there. Look, yeah. We're not ta- we're not in time traveling. You know, like we need to get where we know we need to go." And then the trees, everything, the houses, everything just moved out of their way and they went straight to the tree. And as they're starting to get there, they get to the tree, they see this um, light sort of emanate, this green light that kind of came up and then this form, the shadowy form just kind of emerged and it's like, 
ah, fond memories looking at the tree. And then that's where they end up going to break. So uh, really, really well done, really well-timed break. And you kind of get the feeling of, all right, this is now on. So yeah, yeah, let's, let's dive into the second half. Okay. All right, so, all right, we got this energy now shadow thing pointing up the tree saying fond memories then it actually just turns into the form of delilah um, right and and it's, it's and it's still a, a shadowy form yeah. you know it's and it's a feminine shadowy form of her mm-hmm. it's not you know she's not fully there that's right yep but um yeah and they just start talking to her you know <laughs> like they're they're trying to they're trying to be a little sly you know they're trying to make deal wheel and deal you know yeah. type thing but well she kind of kicks it off by saying you know well it's nice to see you guys uh, in person yeah. basically in That's person finally and yeah. um you know i think it was i think it was chetney who tries to kind of like wheel and deal a little bit to say hey look we're both after the same thing Right. But he, oh, before that though, <laughs> FCG goes into full therapy mode and is like, "Hey, you know, <laughs> yeah. you ever need to that talk?" That part was hilarious. <laughs> He's like, yeah. "So, if you ever need anyone to talk to, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've all done things, and we all need someone to." <laughs> it never but, hurts to talk. Yeah. It never hurts to talk to someone. <laughs> well, what's cool is that, like. Um, you see, I think Orem notices, he's got a pretty good perception, so, like, I don't know if it was passive check or a passive perception, or he actually rolled a check, but, like, he notices... It was, like, a 27 or something. Uh, that must have been what it was. So he yeah. notices, like, like limbs sort of formed in almost like a cage where Laudna was in the tree. Right. And um, so after Chetney's wheel and deal, he had a really high roll. He nat 20 the deception, which made... Which made uh, Delilah go, okay, I will listen to them because they'll leave if I don't and we need to figure out a way. And then she kind of reveals where uh, Laudna is. Yeah, and... yeah. Well, it's one of those things where he makes a lot of sense with his argument. He yeah. rolled really good and then he, you know, he told her, he's like, look, we've got to figure out a way to get her back. Yeah. Her coming back is the best for all of us. And we want to help, so however you think that, that we can do that, we'll do it. But we want to talk to Laudna to make sure that she agrees. Yeah. So when that happens, like I said, and then uh, the last yeah. is okay, and he shows it. So Matt goes, and Marisha, I want you to come over here. And so I know, Matt, I know. Matt leaves, and Marisha's there, and she's like, I don't know what to do. She's just yeah. sitting there. And that's then, the part, that's the part yeah. I want to go back and actually watch. Oh, because, man, you know, it's so great. In yeah. my car, in my car, it would only um, play the audio because yeah. I was in spotty service, so it wouldn't, you know, the video wouldn't go. So I had no clue. I'm not like I'm going to watch the video while I'm driving, anyways. But you can kind of, you know, right. glean what's happening just from like glimpses. But yeah, so I've got to go back and rewatch it because I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely worth watching. Uh, and, and but it, it and it's just like it sounded like it was just like he normally does where he's like yeah. Marisha come over here but like instead yeah. of Marisha coming to the table with the rest of the group he calls her over to his spot and Matt leaves so like that everybody's like what is happening yeah. is yeah. Marisha yeah. the DM now and so yeah. it's basically just letting her um, you know and it takes a while for that to happen because she's uh, sitting in a different area and so like it took a yeah. while for her to come over and then so just build uh, the anticipation. Oh man. And yeah. so like then it was her just kind of like playing, you know, um Imogen reaching out and saying, "Hey, you need to fight her." And she's basically like, "I've been fighting her for 30 years." Like right. yeah. yeah. You know. I and can't. Yeah. I can't There's do nothing it. I can do. Yeah. So, uh, you know, after the exchange that they have, Delilah closes the branches back up. And Imogen's like, nope. So she 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 immediately hits her with a blast. Um, I know you she know. Delilah Briarwood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with a psychic, and I think it was a psychic lance or something. That's right, psychic lance. And yeah. so like she hits her with that, and then combat is just in full swing, right? So yeah. um, Delilah, being 
a necromancer. She summons some skeletons, so there's those that they have to deal with. Oh, but lim- li- like FCG comes in clutch. Let me tell you. Turn, I tell you turns what. Turns undead. Well, for the first time ever, turns yes, undead. Yes, I know. They I haven't know. really had awesome. opportunities, but like, um, and also using Changebringer point, which makes you think, okay, is he now moving towards being a cleric of the Changebringer? Um, so yeah, so using that as a holy symbol was I think, really awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think now that he knows he has a soul, I think now that he knows he has a soul, yep. I think he'll start looking for a, like a patron or you know, like a deity to to. Yeah. Uh, you know, the change bringer comes to mind definitely because sure. he's carrying around the coin and it was given to him. It's the only thing he has. It's a holy symbol, and he's been to, he's been asking about about them, him, her. I think right, her. Yeah, and to her, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, and been told that they're good or they're not a bad, you know, deity to follow. Yeah, so. not e- not evil. Yeah, so right. it's it's yeah, it's interesting to me that he's going that route, um, which is cool. Like you know, he yeah. gives gives a chance to kind of grow and change. And I love that that's a thematic thing. It doesn't necessarily have. It's not a mechanical thing. Like he's not choosing to be a different class or taking a level right. in a different class. He's still a cleric. He was right. just uh, a therapist cleric before, <laughs> and now he's right. maybe moving towards a spiritual cleric. Yeah, it was right. Really and then, yeah. and then the whole like thought that the coin was spraying kind of like a fire hose type thing, you know, where he was yeah, like, yeah. "I'm pointing it out, and it's a wide spray, and I can't really control <laughs> it," you know. So that was funny. I was like, yeah. "Oh, Sam." Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> like if you don't have some of those moments, it gets so like. I don't yeah. know, just so heavy. So sometimes it yeah. means you need to have that. So yeah, so then you've got that happening. You've got um, what else? Uh, she's got Chetney. some crazy spells she's throwing. Well, she's she hitting with some the necromantic. Yeah. N- necrotic. It was a necrotic, like burst or something. Yeah. She's got so crazy she's hitting them with that as they go, which yeah. is doing significant damage so chetney hits her with the brand of castigation um which you know awesome that's that's uh an ability i don't think we've seen too much out of chetney and then imogen out of nowhere does a call ruidus uh yeah like i think that? that that was the that was the feat that matt gave her you remember at the end of the show, after they were fighting Odahan, and she like exploded, and then he said, I have something for you to, I have a new feat for you. And then everybody was oh. like, what, what, what? what? And nobody knew what it was. I think that she's gonna be a little bit like FCG, where there's gonna be usage of it, of that ma- of that feat or that magic, is gonna cause her harm. And at a certain point, I think it's gonna, unleash yeah. the beast <laughs> you know what it reminds me of like you've read uh almost all the dresden file books so far um <laughs> <laughs> almost uh it reminds me in the dresden files where uh spoilers for anybody who hasn't read <laughs> the dresden files up to i don't remember which book but uh and anyway it, there's a spoiler so I'll do this when the spoilers are back. So just or uh, <laughs> not around anymore. So keep watching. Just mute. Um, so the, uh, the what it reminds me of is when Harry picks up the uh, Denarius and he has Lashiel in the back of his head. And then for a while, he's like, oh, I'm not going to use that. And then for a while, I mean, for years, every once in a while, he'll call on Hellfire and like he'll use it. And then like a little bit more, a little bit more. It's kind of like. Eh, am I going that route? That's right. what it reminds me of. It's like this little thing. It's like in the back of her mind, and the more she uses it, it might get her closer to um, yep. that realm. So, yeah, really interesting. Well, uh, yeah, because it pits the decision. Like, you have it. Oh, wait. And if you use it... Oh, sorry. I, I'm just... No, I'm just letting everybody know I'm done talking about spoilers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, you're at you're right. And I, I feel like what it does is it's a temptation, right? It's one of those yeah. things where you take this seemingly good character who's shy and a little unassuming and but really powerful, yeah. doesn't know how powerful she is, and then you drop something in her lap and then her best friend gets killed. How far do you go and what do you use? Do you use it, you know? And if you use it, 
how many times can you use it before it starts tipping the scales? Yeah. So. Well, and, and, and you know, uh, at times I can maybe be a little rough, not rough, but I can be a little hard on uh, Ashley and like not picking her spells or getting right on things. But I tell you what, uh, she did a great job this episode. She was uh, for, freaking amazing. She did the earth earthbound or earthbind. Yep. I can't remember yep. the spell, which said, okay, you can't fly anymore. That was clutch. Yep. Um, she lashed her down. Yep. Yep. So, and and then uh, I think it was... She was she was the first one to figure out that the tree could get hurt. Yeah. I think it was like With as soon fire. as they hurt... Well, also the other way too, right? I think they hurt Delilah and then they saw a flash in the tree right. first, right? And then, yeah, later it was like, oh, uh, she had Mister throw some uh, fire stuff. Poo. Yeah, flaming poop, as Fancy. you do. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, and then they realized, oh, this is actually affecting her, which was clutch. Um, she just although, started throwing ray rays of scorching rays at it. You y- know? Yes, but uh, I think before they got to that point, Delilah did that blast and uh, it it caught Ashton, Orem, and FCG. Ashton used his moat of possibility, rerolled, and yeah. was able to stay up. FCG was down, and when he was down, he disappeared. So they they didn't know for sure, but they figured that it just meant that they wake up. Right. We don't we don't know for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that was kind of the case. And right. then, uh, like you said, I think that's when after the like, Mr. and Fern just start laying into the tree. Yeah. And um, then Orem did some fighter stuff and, you know, yeah. like parkour <laughs> well, up the tree, trying he, to get to where Laudna's little cage area was at. And I love the fact that he did, it had came up with this awesome thing. He tried it. It didn't work. He used yeah. his mode of possibility and did it again. And it worked yes. this time. Yeah. However, he got hit with a blast too, and Orem's down. So yes. uh, now you and got. And he disappeared. <laughs> and yeah, and then he's off the battle. Like he completely disappeared. Now, no but before that battle. though, before he did that though, he did sink his sword into the trunk and yep. rip into it a little bit, you know. And then right. he got popped, and then he was gone. And I think that also revealed the trunk is where. Uh, didn't it like because she wasn't where she was before and then it revealed oh laudna's in the trunk so like it kind of let them know this is what's going on um yeah fern just keeps going destroys the roots but she had some great roles ashley uh, sometimes is not lucky at all that's that's true she really really had a good a good game i mean her roles were on point yeah and and props to like them whirly i think they Especially with the way it all ended up where Laudna died in the first place. Props for them really working well together this time. Um, Ashton giving the potion to um, Imogen Imogen. was really good too because they all knew there's no reviving anybody. There's no healing when somebody's down. It's like, this is all you get. You get to zero and you're out of this fight. And so, um, and that happened to her. Like she got to that point, but used her mode of possibility to have... Um, Delilah re-roll. She critical failed, natural one. And then uh, it's that was a clutch situation because that gave her what she needed to do. She, I think she downed the potion after that. And then yeah. um, she was like I, and rightfully so, she's like, hey, don't I need to have this spell ready to be able to call for help? And Dallison's like, you need to just let loose what yeah. you got, which rightfully last so. Third, third level. Yeah. Throws lightning bolt, splits the tree. The, the, the tree can't do a deck save, so splits the tree in half. Um, flash of uh, white light, and Laudna is pulled from the tree, and Delilah is screaming no. Yeah. So, I ask you, what does that mean? Well, I'm hoping that it means that they were able to complete the quest of of separating the two of them i'm hoping i mean yeah i don't know you know she made a really good show at the very part of the fight she went on and on about how if she 
their souls are intertwined there and they would have to sunder and that the sundering would kill both of them so i'm really hoping how she started acting towards the end where she was getting as angry as she was she kept talking about how she had other plans and other things that she could do but she got really angry she was pissed and so yeah. i'm really hoping that all of that was just deception on her part that there really was a slim possibility of them being able to pull the two apart and um you know and get laudna back without uh delilah because there's no way like when they wake up in the real world or you know in where they're at they won't get any help from pike they're not going to get any help from the dorolos if they can't prove that delilah's gone yeah they're not going to let them bring her back i so I think you're right i'm also i'm also concerned with what comes back but when they when they awake they see everybody else around them uh, like that was uh, taken from yeah. the battlefield earlier. So when they wake up, they actually we know that, and that's where it ends. But to your point, so so who comes back? Is it Laudna or is it Matilda? Like um, I'm wondering, is Laudna, um, if if Matilda as a little girl is the person that grows up to be Laudna now, and I'm wrong right. about all that, which is completely 100 percent possible, a thousand percent possible. Um, like, is it Laudna came into play once there was a taste of Delilah's soul intertwined? Um, I, I don't know. But what comes back, is it going to be the same Laudna that they know? Or is it going to be uh, Matilda that uh, right. didn't make it to what Laudna was? I don't know. It's really interesting. Well, and, yeah, and two... It, it's same same question like what's going to come back um the only thing that was there was a sliver and they're not searching for i i, I thought they weren't it, i thought it was like a known thing or a given thing that like her whole soul isn't there it's she came back as a hollowed one you know and like she had enough space inside of her to house two souls so is she gonna come back okay? Or is I don't she gonna know. be a vegetable? You know, like I mean, it's if she's missing, what was that half of Delilah giving her other than extra power? Yeah. You know. So, so you make a good point. It's uh, but I what I what I'm not sure about is is it a known thing? It's a known thing yeah. mechanically right. about the Hollow One, but hollow I don't ones, think yeah. yeah, but I don't think that the the characters know that's how that worked. The same question was something that FCG was searching for. Do I have a soul? Right. And it was kind of like, well, of course you do. Look at all the things you've been doing. Look at how you're treating people. If you were to ask every single person in Hell's Bells or Bell's Hells, I mean, whether or not Laudna had a soul, they would tell you the same thing they told FCG and say right. yes. Even though mechanically she doesn't. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know that they would make that connection that right. or even know the term hollowed one like i don't right. know that they even know that that's what she was yeah we just know that because that's what the game says so right. that's why i'm really intrigued by like how this is going to play out like is matt gonna use the fact that the mechanics say you aren't able like i don't know that there's a rule about whether or not a hollow one can be brought back Right. At all. Like, maybe he's just now figuring this out because it's the first time it's ever happened. So, Well, and know. part of me wa almost wonders if they're going to have to do this, and then Pike is going to have to go search for the other part of her soul. And if they find that other part of the soul, is it going to be Laudna? Because right. they are yeah. only knowing this being that didn't have that part of the soul there. So right. it's almost like, you know what is it that's going to like I almost I feel like no matter what it's not going to be the Laudna that we know yeah well and but the problem too with that though is is like is it going to be another Molly you know like it, it starts treading too close into like the one body housing the different souls and you know they come back and they don't they're somebody different I, I would hope that Matt would kind of see the correlation there and maybe st steer it a different way just so that it's not too similar you know um yeah but I don't know. Maybe, uh, but I also know that he want he works with all the players to figure out like 
you know, what they want to do. And so right. Molly was a kind of formulation of what Taliesin wanted to do for that character. And then it just kind of ran from there. And the same is happening with Lana. So I don't know. It's it's interesting to me to see this play out. I think there's a, it is kind of splitting hairs in some ways. But, you know, D&Ds like that in general, like what's the difference between a ghoul and a ghast and a, you know, or a white and a ghost and like there's a lot of splitting hairs that happen devil and a demon yeah 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 so like um i don't know i'm just curious about how this is all going to play out i just feel as if the laudna that comes back is not going to be the same laudna i i feel the same way too the laudna that they know is laudna that had delilah she's not going to yeah. be the same you yeah. know um she can't be because again we don't know exactly what she was being given i agree i agree it's gonna be really interesting to see how this all plays out um and then does she lose her patron is she not a warlock anymore does she have to go seek another patron does she keep going in sorcery or as a sorceress like you know what does she do if she comes back and she doesn't have delilah she's gonna either have to seek out another patron which who would she who would we even think that she would seek you know all good questions I mean, it's, it's like, maybe or, Fern's grandmother <laughs> It would be interesting. Like they, the, the, this would be the second, if it does switch, it'd be the second time that that's happened. Right. I, it's, it's a interesting thing from a game mechanic perspective. I wonder how often like people that play warlocks have this happen. Maybe I'll throw out a poll or something on our, our yeah. channel to see like how often people that play warlocks are having to change patrons or lose a patron because I'm kind of curious to see how that works. Yeah. I don't have enough experience with players playing warlocks to be able to know if that's a common thing. But anyway, I'll, I'll throw a poll out and see. Yeah, I think it'll find. be really but, interesting to see. Yeah. Um, and then like, how, like, how do you seek out a new one? You know, like you've got to, yeah. You got to go look for a fiend or a arch fay or, uh, you know, totally. like, how yeah. do you get somebody to take you on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Imogen will get powerful enough that she could be her patron. Yeah. <laughs> Rudis. So, well, she could be a well, Rudis warlock. <laughs> that's true. But we've got to, we've, we've got to get her back first. So let's, <laughs> let's see what happens with that. So, all right. Well, um, thanks for sticking with yeah. us while we covered this episode. We will catch you next time. Can't wait for Thursday. Yeah. And, uh, Have a good one. We'll talk to you later.